tonight's big stories. China releases its own footage of its latest water cannon attack in the West Philippine Sea, claiming that a Philippine boat deliberately rammed their ship. And while the lower house is busy looking into SMNI's franchise, Senator Risa Ontiveros urged the Justice Department to issue an immigration lookout bulletin against the network's founder, Pastor Apollo Kiboloy. And President Bongo Marcos makes it clear there will be no extension of the December 31 deadline for the consolidation of PUV operators. What now for the transport groups? Well, we'll find out from Piston National President Modi Floranda later in the show. Good evening, welcome to the show. I'm Regina Lay. And I'm Sean Yao. It's turned into a battle of camera angles. I'm not talking about the latest reality <laughs> show, okay, or us. I'm talking about the latest run-in at the West Philippine Sea. As in previous encounters, China also released its own version of the latest water cannon attack. So let's take a look. What you're seeing on your screens is a 29-second video released by the Chinese Coast Guard. It was shot from the point of view of someone from the CCG ship and it shows Chinese personnel firing water cannons at a Filipino vessel, an act that they described as professional and restrained. They also said they were merely taking quote-unquote control measures at Philippine vessels. The Philippines' resupply boat Unaiza May Onaiza May 1 appeared to be slowly approaching the Chinese ship as China continued to spray water at the Philippine vessel. Moments later, the Philippine boat appeared to have collided with the Chinese ship. Now, in China's eyes, the Philippine vessel was the one that became aggressive and that it intentionally rammed their vessel. Alright, let's now check out the footage from inside the Onaiza May 1. Now, from this perspective, you can see how China's water cannons directly hit the Philippine boat, which is much smaller than the Chinese vessel. Even more significant is that Armed Forces Chief of Staff, Romeo Browner, was inside this very ship. At kung may 29-second video ang China, well, mas maraming ebidensya ang Pilipinas. The News 5 team on board the BRP Cabra shot this video of a Chinese Coast Guard ship with bow number 21555, firing water cannons at one of the boats escorting Onaiza May 1 and MV Kalayaan. Aerial shots likewise saw how two Chinese militia vessels cornered the BRP Cabra while also blasting water cannons at it. Ang daming resibo ng Pilipinas because ang daming baon na journalists. And also because... Uh... It, it, it has turned into this high-tech battle, mm -hmm. right? Everyone comes equipped with drones, different angles, uh, different yeah. cameras at different angles. Um, but it's interesting because mm -hmm. the 29-second video that we're talking about that China released, uh, well, audio yeah. number one, also, so you can't really tell what was who, really going on in uh, the narration. Oh, oh mm -hmm. exactly. And and they described it as, and I quote: "This video shows the Philippine vessel Onaiza May One disregarded warnings." made an unprofessional and dangerous turn and intentionally rammed into the China Coast Guard ship. Responsibility for the collision lies with the provoking Philippine side. That's what they. That's how they describe yeah. this video. And you know, Reg, we repeatedly talk about this. China always says the water cannon is super benign, but it appears that sa lakas, no, nung tama ng water cannon sa boat ng Pilipinas, so tinabaan ng tubig yung radar ng BRP Cabra, and the pressure was so strong, I think the Philippine flag that was mounted on the ship, it ripped. Mm. Mm. So it, there's, there's really video evidence mm. that it, it really hit the smaller Philippine boat. Because last time, remember, we were... Uh, there was kind of doubts. There yeah, were doubts, doubts within some parts of the... Some some commentators mm -hmm. whether or not tumama talaga. But that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. The point is still that they the, the, the Chinese Coast Guard water cannon the Philippine vessel. right? Actually, the press con, right, on the next day, uh, they were asking... Um, Admiral Tariela, whether or not meron bang water cannon rin yung Philippine boats? And he said, yes, meron pero this is just used to put out fires at sea. Mm. And so not they don't as an actually use weapon. it as a, as a weapon, yeah. as an as a aggressive tactic. Like, I like to call it like a water gun. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so Commodore Tariela was like, no, we do not use it for mm. anything other than putting out fires at sea. And what's concerning this time around, I guess, as well, is that they, in the statement that the Philippine Coast Guard released, they mentioned that there were some, um, uh, I, I forgot the exact wording, mm. but the, the, it, it endangered the lives of those on board Nadao, which is 
a bit alarming. It, it pushes the envelope a little bit further, right, in terms of how the serious, the gravity of the situation. Now, of course, Chinese ver China's version of events did not sit well with AFP chief Romeo Browner, who, as we mentioned, was inside Unai's MA1 when the CCG blasted water cannons at them. Let's bring in Brian Basa. He's got the lowdown on Bra Browner's response. Browner, what do you know? Uh, Brian, rather, High sorry, Ranch, what do you know? Armed Forces Chief strongly refutes China's claim that it has been professional in dealing with our vessels passing through the West Philippine Sea. General Romeo Bronner even calls China's moves illegal and dangerous. Here's a rundown of what happened that fateful day from Bronner's point of view. Filipino troops aboard the BRP Shera Madre were all smiles, waving and thanking their general on Sunday. After all, it's the first time a sitting armed forces chief visited them in the Ayungin Shoal. The visit is General Bronner's idea. He says it's his duty to check in on his troops, especially the ones at the front lines of our defense. So General Bronner informed the president about this. Sabi niya, uh, that is a good idea and kindly send my... Christmas greetings to our troops uh, in Ayungin Shoal. No? At uh, binigyan niya ako ng instructions na magdala ng uh, yung kanyang mga regalo dun sa mga tropa natin. But before this joyous moment is the danger our soldiers had to face in the presence of Chinese vessels. General Bronner was aboard the Oniza May 1, a wooden supply boat. He says the Chinese Navy, Coast Guard and militia have been shadowing them since Saturday. I believe na hindi nila alam na ako yung nandun uh, dahil hindi naman ako naka-uniforme while uh, riding the Unaiza May. Uh, in fact, nakatakip na yung mukha ko but uh, mukhang may suspecha lang sila because they were asking for my whereabouts. Tensions escalated early Sunday morning. At, uh, ilang beses sila nag-cut across yung, yung direction namin no? which was very dangerous dahil ang lalaki nila eh. Ang lalaki nila. Maliit lang yung Unaiza May, made up of uh, wood, kahoy lang. Sila, bakal. Our vessels made it past the bigger Chinese ships, but we weren't able to dodge a water cannon attack and a collision right after. So kabaliktaran dun sa sinasabi nila na tayo daw ang bumunggo sa kanila. No? Imposible yun because we will not do that. Dahil maliit lang tayo, kung bumunggo tayo sa kanila ng malakas, maaring mag yung kahoy. China claims it was professional and restrained in dealing with Philippine vessels, but General Bronner strongly disagrees. Hindi professional yun. No? They were doing illegal acts. Bawal yun eh. Bawal yun pagka mag-cut ka sa path ng isang barko. This is, this is illegal and it, this, is, uh, this is unsafe, very unsafe. A day after the incident, General Bronner and his American counterpart, General Charles Q. Brown, got to speak on the phone. We had a uh, good uh, conversation. Marami kami na pag-usapan, uh, at uh, lalong lalo na dahil sila ay uh, treaty ally natin. So we we had the right to to have that conversation between uh, two partners, two allies. The two generals discussed how they can further work together to maintain peace and security in our maritime areas. The U.S. says it's ready to share information with us, especially in our next rotation and resupply missions. The struggle continues over the West Philippine Sea, but for our soldiers, no water cannon or gigantic ship can block our kababayans there from celebrating Christmas while guarding our sovereignty and freedom. Back to you. Thanks for that update, Brian Basa. To weigh in on our latest maritime conflict, we have with us on the program retired Rear Admiral Romel Jude Ong, who's currently serving as Professor of Praxis at the Ateneo School of Government. Good evening, Rear Admiral Ong. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good evening, Regina. Good evening, Sean. Good evening to your viewers. Uh, so you heard our reporting on the issue, but let me just do a quick recap. And this latest, uh, the news pay, the, the the news for tonight is that China released its own version of the run-in at the West Philippine Sea. Uh, it's a 29-second video, and they described it as a professional and restrained act. They said they were merely taking control measures at the Philippine vessels. How? What should we make of this? Well, we have to first contextualize yung yung situation. No? Number one, they have no business there in Second Thomas Shoal. They're encroaching in our exclusive economic zone. Second, 
what they're doing is not the normal behavior of any Coast Guard in any nation that you can find. Uh, and and uh, that is not what professional Coast Guard agencies do. Okay. All right, uh, Admiral, uh, you were quoted by the Manila Bulletin and you said that uh, President Bongbong Marcos has been making the right move to inform the international community about the harassments of China in the West Philippine Sea. Um, and you said also that this would moderate China's behavior. Uh, as it is, this only started uh, this year, or at least uh, when uh, President Bongbong Marcos took over the helm. Uh, do you, do you, can you elaborate more on how this would moderate China's uh, behavior in the disputed waters? As it is, it would seem like they are actually escalating. Well, in the first place, uh, we have to understand that hindi natin kaya yung, yung China on our own. We do not have the resources or the capacity to deal with them on their own. And we need to work with uh, uh, like-minded democracies or like-minded states who feel the same way that uh, the international rule, uh, rule of law should prevail over the South China Sea and in the West Philippine Sea. So, tama lang na i, uh, i involve natin yung other countries uh, and they have supported us uh, with the arbitral ruling. They have supported, they've uh, publicly supported the uh, arbitral, arbitral award. They have uh, uh, actually uh, affirmed their support whenever we do this encounter. We have these misencounters with the Chinese uh, Coast Guard or the militia. Now, I do understand, oh, tama rin naman na nag-escalate siya. Mm -hmm. But escalation uh, and the escalation is, ano eh, it, it ebbs and flows depending on the situation. What we're looking here uh, right now is uh, actually ang mas worrisome is yung, yung, uh, uh, increment, yung increase of num uh, the number of ships that are being employed whenever we do our supply missions. Mm -hmm. the, pro the problem, um, though, Admiral, is that uh, China still almost oh, seven years since the 2016 arbitral award still does not recognize it, even though they are signatory to UNCLOS, which calls for peaceful resolution of maritime disputes. How do we solve this stalemate? China has a maritime strategy and a, and a maritime ambition uh, na is driven by its uh, global uh, security initiative, global uh, development initiative, and yung global civilization initiative nila. So they have a strategy behind that. The arbitral ruling, uh, uh, do not expect them to at some point in time na, ano yun, na they will conform to that. In fact, they, they have steadfastly uh, stated that uh, they do not agree with that uh, arbitral ruling. Okay. What they will understand is deterrence and uh, the rule of, rule of force rather than the rule of law. And uh, dito, uh, what we need to is to capacitate ourselves to be able to have at least yung, yung deterrent effect. Okay? It's not, hindi yung madali, kasi that will take resources. And the absence of that, because of yung gaps natin, we need to work, as I said earlier, we need to work with other countries to help fill in the gaps ng mga capabilities na, na kailangan, natin, kailangan natin, pero hindi natin mapunuan right now. Okay? Yeah, Don't papasa say... to yung ating, uh, yung ating alliance with the United States and our strategic partnerships with the other middle powers in Asia and uh, the rest of Europe. Yeah. But, okay, when you say deterrent effect, um, also in the past year, past year and a half, we have been uh, getting a lot of support, a lot of statements from a lot of the Western countries, our allies, even Japan, Australia, here in the region. Um, do you think that uh, this would all lead to something because yun nga tinawag nyo ng stalemate walang nagyayari di ba we can file as many diplomatic protests and notes verbal and uh, at the end of the day we can't act on on this so if we capacitate ourselves admiral will that not lead to more escalation and would escalation really be what we are looking for we need to be more creative of course Yung, yung what we're talking of is uh, ano eh, that's the basic military solution to the problem. Eh. Okay? So you, you modernize, you upgrade your capabilities, and you work with other countries. Okay? But we need to be looking at 
ano yung other vulnerabilities ng China na pwede nating i-leverage against okay and uh, that will take some that will take some discernment uh, to understand that for example uh, question Chinese maritime traffic or Chinese commercial maritime traffic passes through the Philippine archipelago how do we leverage that uh, fact okay kasi ang katapat nun, uh, uh, yung energy and food security natin yung tinatamaan eh, pag encroach nila sa ating exclusive economic zone. Second uh, consideration, uh, we are the number two source of nickel of China. How do we leverage that? Okay. Uh, that issue. So we need to look at levers na we, have, we can use to our advantage outside of yung military uh, yung military uh, confrontation uh, Kaya, uh, isn't that isn't there a danger that this might um, get blown out of proportion especially since the Philippines is more reliant on the Chinese economy than they are reliant on us pardon I didn't get your question this question the question is, if we want to bring the trade aspect into this, hindi ba delikado yun because our economy is more reliant on Chinese, on the, the, on China than they are reliant on us. Uh, in terms of exports, we only export uh, uh, not that many things to China. Uh, but in, we import a lot of stuff from them. So, the, hindi ba delikado yun if we want to bring in the trade aspect to this uh, maritime dispute? My, my understanding is we are not we are a net importer we are not a net, net exporter so uh we are not dependent on chinese pro we are they are we are not dependent on china as a market rather we are the market of china okay okay, okay. so uh, admiral uh, another yeah. thing to add, no, um, when you say weak points in China, I think a lot of pundits have mentioned it before, um, their image, they, which they have been kind of whitewashing and trying to improve on in the last several decades. Uh, they're saying that's one weak point because ang dami nga nating resibo, ang dami nating videos, and a lot of... Uh, a lot of the run-ins in the West Philippine Sea are getting exposure internationally, which would hurt their image. Um, would this be enough to actually, you know, push for some sort of change in the status quo in the West Philippine Sea or in the disputed waters? Okay, when you look at yung, yung optics of yung activities in the West Philippine Sea, you have to ask, sino yung audience niya? And it's not the international community alone. It's yung, the more important audience in China is the domestic audience. Niya. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes you will hear yung, ano, yung, yung even in, yung, yung kanina, nung you, you mentioned mm -hmm. some of those, uh, yung reportage niya on yung what, what transpired in the second Thomas show, mm -hmm. malayo sa nangyari sa katotohanan. But hindi tayo yung target audience nun eh. Hindi rin target audience sa international community. They're trying to convey to their domestic audience that they are doing this uh, to protect yung Chinese interests in, in the West Philippine Sea, in the South China Sea. Okay? That supports yung narrative nila na they, the, the entire South China Sea is part of their maritime territory. So makita nyo merong minsan illogical, yung, ano, illogical or totally out of the blue uh, yung, uh, yung narrative nila. Because we are not the target audience. This year alone, the country has filed 63 protests against China. In all of President Marcos's term, there have been 130 protests. Uh, we are at a situation where the run-ins, the incidents at the West Philippine Sea seem to be happening more frequently, not less frequently. What else can we do from here? Okay, we must understand yung diplomatic protest natin, ang analogy nang is parang police blatter yan sa police station. Eh. So it puts on, it puts on record yung, yung uh, coercive tactics, coercive activities nila. And uh, those records became the basis when we filed yung ano, case natin sa, sa, for the arbitral ruling. So that, that is the purpose. But beyond that, uh, of course, 
yung diplomatic protest does not have an effect sa nangyayari sa dagat okay? o nangyayari sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, But... <clears throat> main problem natin, we're dealing with the capacity issue. Eh. Unless we this resolve the capacity issue, yung options natin are right now are uh, rather limited. Okay? So, Would the, the Mutual Defense Treaty be part of that capacity issue? Um, of course, AFP Chief Browner has said no need to invoke the MDT with the United States uh, because hindi naman daw armed attack. But uh, is that part of it? Um, you know, building allies, PBBM is headed over to Japan. Presumably, one of the things that will be discussed is yung gulo sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, would this all count? And would it okay. even make a difference? Okay, capacity issue pertains to yung, ano, yung internal capabilities natin yung within the Philippines, within the military and yung Coast Guard. So that is a capacity issue. Yung, when we work with the allies and strategic partners, that's leverage, that's trying to mitigate yung kapa, kap, capacity issues natin or capability gaps by working with other countries. So in this case, what we need to look for is uh, a coalition of like-minded states or like-minded democracies that are willing to work with us in in order to enforce yung uh, no, arbitrary ruling. Uh, China is actually trying to wage, uh, I call this in, in my lectures, I, I, I contextualize this into ano, China is waging, is waging a global type of insurgency because they're trying to subvert yung existing order eh, mm -hmm. and replace it with a more uh, sinicized or uh, sinocentric uh, order. Yung, yung, yung will fit with their own sense of uh, what how the world should look like or how the world should operate okay so ito yung ano ito yung existential conflict natin uh uh, uh, uh with the, the current orders being challenged so hindi lang yung sovereignty or sovereign rights ng Pilipinas yung nakataya dito yung yung sense of uh, yung sense of liberal democracy yung the way of doing things that we're enjoying right now and with other countries uh, with similar uh, systems, yun yung under threat. And uh, South China Sea South China is just one of those battlegrounds. Kumbaga. Okay, if not, if you don't think the protests work, what about the summoning of the Chinese ambassador, Huang Xilian? He was summoned uh, today. We are still awaiting word on what transpired in that in that meeting um, and then now also in Senate we have Senate President Juan, Juan Miguel Subiri saying suggesting that he should be sent back and replaced with someone who could um, in his words be more effective will that help I think that's rather uh, extreme uh, but I would defer to the Department of Foreign Affairs because uh, they that they're in a better position to to address that question or concern but from my end, my question there would be, uh, what do we intend to achieve if we send back the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador to Beijing? Uh, aside from conveying our displeasure, does it help our situation right now? Tsaka, I may be wrong, no? but I understand he's due for rotation or uh, uh, reassignment as well by, by, by the first quarter of next year. So it's due to leave Manila talaga. For replacement, yeah. So, Admiral, basically, what you're saying is this is pretty much going to be what we're going to be observing, at least when, when in the context of the disputed waters. Na ganit, ganito lang, pa ulit ulit yung mangyayare, because unless something happens to change the status quo, we is, is am I right to assume that ganito na lang, no magahabulan tayo don sa disputed waters? Ah. Uh. Ito sana mga ito sana yung ano yung yung ideal no we're trying to buy time we're trying to buy time until we are able to have the capacity to deal with with this problem uh, at least within the level ng ng Pilipinas kaya natin solving if not all at least part of it for example uh, uh, how do we allow how can we restore yung access ng our fisher folks to Scarborough Shoal uh, question of uh, how when can we tap yung uh, when can we resume yung survey sa sa Reed Bank o sa Recto Bank kasi malampaya will be running out of gas by 2027 so those are energy and food security issues that need to be dealt with so 
we need to look at stopgap measures muna to buy time uh, while we capacitate ourselves. And one of those is, of course, trying to engage yung other allies and partners natin to work with us to restore, ano, to restore order dun sa exclusive economic zone natin. The, the analogy here is yung parang yung barangay mo uh, because we yung community community policemen natin are not all the time uh, patrolling our streets. So napasukan tayo. Okay? So we need to capacitate ourselves so that we can be, be able to put to deploy community policemen in our barangay to make to make sure na yung ating na uh, yung members ng community natin are able to peacefully uh, do what they need to do uh, yung yung activities economic activities nila uh, daily so yun yun nawala eh hmm. okay we're going to have to leave that there for now we thank you so much for your insights tonight retired rear admiral romel jude ong after the break the House Committee on Legislative Franchises has released SMNI hosts Lorraine Badoy and Jeffrey Sellis. The details when we return. Keep it here on One News. Watching Big Story here on One News. After filing a Senate resolution to investigate Apollo Kiboloy and the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, Senator Isontiveros has called on the Justice Department to issue an immigration lookout bulletin order against the controversial pastor. Manlos Banyos with the report. In a press conference this morning, Senator Risa Onteveros presented video testimonies of two former members who experienced abuse from the Kingdom of Jesus Christ group. I am Arlene Stone. Arlene Stone was 15 years old when she joined the religious group and as part of their faith. She said it had to be accompanied by service. So from Davao, she was brought to Manila to sell rice cakes and cochinta. Aside from selling, they were also forced to beg. And to get more people to give, they allegedly had to deceive people. Kaya po kami pinapapanggap na bilang estudyante at mga pipi at bingi para kami po ay makakuha ng mga simpatiya sa mga tao at malaki po ang aming remittance. And when she could not reach the required quota, Ako po ay nakaranas mismo ng pamamalo galing kay Kibuloy. It was 60 slashes po at ako din po ay nakaranas na babatukan ni Kibuloy. At ako din po ay nakaranas na ipahiya sa harapan ng mga members at workers ni Kibuloy. 
According to Onteveros, there are allegedly different levels of recruits in the KOGC. They are said to be distinct from the inner circle of the pastor referred to as the pastoral. Its members often take on roles such as assistants, attendants, and sometimes even serve as the pastor's bathing assistant. The closest members of the pastoral, according to the senator, allegedly engaged in sexual activities for Kibuloy. Meron kaming um, at least isa pang victim survivor, menor de edad, uh, na nagbigay uh, ng testimonya sa amin na pati siya pinarender ng uh, sexual services kay Kibuloy. Senator Anteveros lamented that such abuses are allegedly persisting to this day. That's why through the resolution she filed, the Senate Committee on Women and Children is scheduled to conduct a hearing where some of those complaining against Kibuloy will testify against him. Anteveros though is aware that many victims are afraid, especially since Kibuloy is claimed to have connections with the government. Pero maraming nagbubulungan dyan. Malakas daw si Kibuloy sa gobyerno at mga politiko. Kaya daw nila itong ipagsawalang bahala. Hindi ako naniniwala dyan. Ontiveros is also set to write to the DOJ requesting the issuance of a lookout bulletin order to prevent the pastor from leaving the country. Hindi masama kung makipag-ugnayan ng DOJ at NBI sa counterpart nila sa US para masigurong uh, hindi makatakas sa uh, kamay ng batas o ng hustisya uh, si Kibuloy. For their part, Kibuloy's lawyer, attorney Ferdinand Topasio, said the allegations against the pastor are just deception and harassment against him. Na ito ay bahagi ng pattern ng panggigipit, ng haharas sa SMNI at sa mga kawani nito sa Kingdom of Jesus Christ at kay Pastor Kibuloy. At nagumpisa po yan doon sa pag uh, uh, pananakot na babawi ng prangkisa ng SMNI, yung pag, uh, uh, pagkakuntip at pagkakulong kina Yusek Badoy at saka kay Ka Eric Selis. Topasio could not confirm whether Kibuloy will attend the Senate hearing, implying as well that Ontiveros' concern for women may be selective. Senator Ontiveros, meanwhile, has to respond to this pronouncement but had earlier promised that the hearing against Kibuloy will happen by January next year. SMNI hosts Lorraine Badoy and Jeffrey Sellers won't be spending Christmas in detention after all. The House Committee on Franchises have released both after nearly a week in detention. The committee unanimously voted to lift the detention order for both Badoy and Sellers, citing humanitarian considerations. The two were previously sent to detention after being cited in contempt for different reasons. Sellers for refusing to disclose his source when he alleged that House Speaker Martin Romualdez had spent some 1.8 billion pesos in his overseas trips, and Badoy for giving conflicting statements on her employment status with the network. A petition questioning her their detention was also filed before the Supreme Court just yesterday. Meanwhile, the bill seeking to cancel SMNI's franchise is now being deliberated on first reading at the lower house. Sinabi naman po nila verbally sa akin na alam naman daw nila may pagkukulang sila. Uh, kaya as far as I'm concerned, they're also both remorseful. No? Alam po ninyo, for humanitarian reasons, hindi mo kailangan uh, yan ay uh, magkaroon pa ng humingi ng sorry o ano man. Eh, takami na ho mismo ang nag-decide na sila ipakawalan pareho. Celis, who has apologized for the erroneous report against Speaker Romualdez, had this to say after his release. Mapuhay po ang kalayaan sa pamamahayag at kalayaan sa malayang pananalita. Yan po ay tungkulin ng bawat na sa pamahalaan, lalo na nang may kapangyarihan sa gobyerno na kilalanin. Yan po ang pinanindigan namin. Hindi po ang SMNI lamang, kundi ang lahat ng mga media ay pwede rin mangyari sa kanila na ipitin sila kapag hindi tayo naging matapang na panindigan ng kalayaan sa pagpapahayag at malayang pananalita. Hindi yan pwede sagkaan ng kapangyarihan ng Estado o ng gobyerno. It's interesting because uh, Committee Chair Gus Tambunting says both are remorseful, right? But actually, uh, Badoy 
In a letter posted to Facebook by her friend and ally, Chrisette Chu, uh, and fellow Duterte supporter, I, would, I should say, said she would, quote, and I, and I quote, would rather eat rusty nails and drink goat's piss than apologize to my tormentors. Right. This she was did the not, letter where, yeah. where she actually named her tormentors. Exactly. She didn't list. leave any doubts as to who she's referring to. She actually named them. She said these legislators are, quote, and I quote again, abusive and arrogant. She named Manuel Brosas Castro Abante, Negrales, Acop, Kimbo, Tambulting, Paduano, Pimentel, Fernandez, and Suarez. This was just posted a little over an hour ago, so I'm not sure if the lawmakers have seen. But it's uh, medyo conflicting yung medyo conflict. stories, right? Actually, is... also, even the furlough issue was very conflicting because as of yesterday, when uh, Ka Eric Celis submitted this letter to mm. the committee hearing, uh, uh, he was very apologetic. He mm. cited, of course, his mom not being able to sleep, and he was really worried uh, about humanitarian uh, grounds. Oh. But then they were the congressmen were still like, mm, we're not sure, you know, if we're oh. gonna give him furlough. And I'm like, come on, but it's Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, he did disclose the source. He did disclose at least, at but, least, yeah. in, in secret oh. to the congressmen. So maybe that's why they were lenient on it. Yeah, but but it would, but I'm not sure. Whether she was really remorseful or she's, you know, she's still on fire on social media at least. We're going to pause for a quick break right now, but after that, no more extension. President Bongo Marcos has made it clear that December 31 is going to be the deadline for consolidation of the jeepneys. We'll be speaking with Piston National President Modi Floranda about this when the big story returns. Stay with us. still watching the big story here on One News. President Marcos has spoken. There will be no more extension in the government's year-end deadline for the consolidation of PUV operators. This decision was made after Marcos met with transportation officials. He said 70% of all operators have committed to consolidate under the PUV modernization program and this is why they cannot let the minority cause further delays that will affect majority of operators banks and the public. Transport Group Piston had earlier announced a strike for December 14 and 15 to protest the December 31 deadline for consolidation. The group is also planning to question the legality of the PUV modernization program before the Supreme Court. Transport Group Piston, National President Modi Floranda joins us via Zoom now to discuss their next steps. Good evening and thanks for joining us, Modi. Can you hear us? Uh, magandang magandang gabi po sa, sa inyong dalawa at uh, siyempre sa ating mga tagat subaybay, magandang gabi po sa lahat. Uh, so, December 31 na po, no extension of this deadline. What is your plan now? What is Piston's plan? Uh, sa atin ay uh, mariin po natin uh, kinukundem itong uh, pahayag na, na ni BBM na ayaw nang bigyan ng extension ng ating public transport uh, na kung saan ay uh, sa, sinasabi nga po natin na ang uh, sektor po ng transportasyon ay katuwang ng gobyerno sa, sa pinong pag-inog 
ng ating ekonomiya at kahit hindi natin maintindihan na bakit ta uh, uh, gusto tanggalin ano gusto tayong tanggalin sa serbisyo sa sa ating uh, mga sa ating mga mamamayan Kailan po niyo plano no uh, Sir Modi tong uh, petisyon sa Supreme Court handa na po ba ang inyong mga affidavit ang inyong kaso ang inyong petisyon uh, bukod syempre nabanggit nga namin sa report kanina December 14 at 15 may strike na naman Opo, uh, yung ating uh, pagpapail ng, uh, ng kaso sa Korte Suprema, ito ay masuti pong pinag-aaralan din ng ating mga legal, ano, ng ating mga abogado, na kung saan ay uh, alam naman natin itong uh, programa ng modernization na hindi naman ito lehitimong batas, kundi ito ay isang executive order lamang sa ilalim ng uh, 2017-011 at uh, pinatutupad ng uh, DOTR ng, uh, ng LTFRB. Kaya uh, sa atin ay tayo ay uh, hindi naman tayo nagkulang sa usapin ng pakipagtalastasan at uh, paglalatad ng ating uh, mga makahikahinihan, ng ating mga driver at mga operator, na kung saan ay uh, titingnan po natin ay mula po ng Marso na tayo ay pinatawag ng Office of President, ay uh, inilatag natin yung ating mga kahinihan. Yung una ay yung uh, pagbasura nga dito sa 2017-011 at uh, yung muling uh, pagbabalik sa limang taon ng ating mga prangkisa. At uh, yung pag-alis ng deadline, ano, na pag-alis po ng deadline ng December 31. Kaya uh, nagulat tayo sa pa, pa sa announcement na na BBM na sinasabi niya na halos sa uh, 70% na yung uh, nagko-comply sa so, sa pimpo ng modernization na kung saan ay uh, titingnan ko natin ay uh, dito pa lamang sa National Capital Region ay uh, malaking porsyento pa rin ng ating public transport na sa hanay ng mga jeepney at hanap na hanay ng mga UP na hindi pumasok sa control condition. Ano po yung uh, numero na meron ninyo? No? Ang sabi kasi ni Presidente ay 70% ay nag-commit. Meaning, hindi pa naman final yun. Commitment pa lang yun. Kung baga, laway lang, no, Sir Modi. Uh, ang numero ninyo, nasaan ba? Nasa 29, 30%? Ilan na po ang talagang nakapag-join uh, na sa co-op or corporation? Uh, Bati mismo po din sa uh, inilabas ng, uh, ng LTFRB at ng DOTR, kung saan po ng mga jeepney ay nasa 26% pa lamang. Uh, yung uh, nagko-comply so, sa pimpo ng modernization at uh, umaabot po ng 36% naman ito sa mga UB. Kaya uh, sinasabi natin ay uh, saan naging basihan ni, uh, ni Pangulong B, uh, na, ni BBM yung kanyang announcement na kung saan ay uh, talaga nga majority pa rin ng ating public transport dito sa ating, uh, sa ating bansa, hindi lamang dito sa NCR, ay mga jeepney pa rin po. To be fair, Mr. Floranda, hindi rin naman yata nagulang yung gobyerno in terms of giving you notice. Kasi yung itong PUV modernization program since 2017 pa to under President, uh, former President Duterte. Um, if you, of course, sabi na ni President Marcos, no more extensions, but you're trying to push for more time. How much more time exactly ang kailangan nyo? Uh, sa atin ay ang uh, uh, malinaw naman yung ating uh, position na mula po nung uh, pinatupad nga ito, yung uh, 2017-011, ang uh, sinasabi natin ay wala naman tayong tutul so, sa pinang-modernization. Ang uh, linalabanan lang po natin dito yung uh, maling mandana ng modernization na bakit natin kailangan bumili ng ubod ng mga mamahalin, ng mga sasakyan, at bakit natin kailangan magbuo ng corporation o magbuo ng kubartiba. Kung ang layunin lamang po ng, uh, ng gobyerno ay para ayusin ang muda ng ating public transport, dapat ang inunap po ng gobyerno ay uh, ang unang linika niya ay industriya para tayo po mismo yung uh, lumika ng ating, uh, ng ating public transport. Sapagkat uh, sa ilalim ng modernization sa ngayon, ay uh, hindi po yung ating bansa ang pinapaunlad ng uh, programang ito, kundi ang pinapaunlad dito ay yung mga dayuhan katulad po ng China na kung saan ay uh, ito yung nag, uh, naglalako ng mga modern na mga minibus dito sa ating bansa. Kaya tan sa atin ay uh, malinaw yung ating position, sige kung alayo ni ng gobyerno, ay para ayusin ng ating public transport. Bakit hindi po yung ating mga lokal na mga, na mga manggagawa ng ating public transport at suportahan po ng gobyerno? Actually, uh, Sir Modi, no, na mga ilang weeks ago, nandito si uh, LTFRB spokesperson, Celine Pialago. I'm sure kilala niyo na po si Celine. Ang nabanggit niya po, ay eh, meron naman daw local models or local manufacturers ng modern jeepneys na sa mas murang halaga makukuha po. Uh, sinabi rin niya, no, nabanggit din niya yung five-year, ibalik, na ibabalik yung five-year franchise for jeepneys. Um, saan po kayo nagkakalabuan? Kasi nung nakausap namin siya, parang malinaw naman po kung ano yung uh, magyayari no, na walang face out, ganito. At this point in time, malinaw na rin po ba sa lahat ng mga operators natin na wala nga talagang magaganap na face out? 
Ang isang uh, nagiging malaking problema, iba po yung kayag ng LT Party ng TOTR sa sado sa mga nilalabas nila mga dokumento, ano? Na sinasabi nila ay uh, uh, pwede naman tayong mag-rehabilitation o pwede naman tayong pwede na mas murang sasakyan. Ang isang nagiging malaking problema dito ay walang inilalabas na guidelines. So, uh, city border ang uh, ayun siya ng uh, LT Party ng DOTR. Kaya uh, yung sinasabi din po nila na pili, eh, babalik nila sa limang taon yung ating prangkisa. Pero may pasubali po dun eh. Ibabalik nila yung ating prangkisa kung papasok po tayo doon sa balangkas ng uh, consolidation. At malinaw sa ngayon, kahit po yung mga nagkukulong, kahit na po yung mga kapartiba ngayon, yung mga uh, corporation na tumatakbo sa kasalukuyan, ito po ay mga temporary permit to operate. Hindi po prangkisa ang hawak ng mga nagmodernize nito. Sapagkat uh, hindi pa halos sumaabot doon sa 100% na sinasabi nila na kapag nakawang 100% ng compliance ka, ay saka lang nila ibibigay yung uh, limang taon na prangkisa. Okay, uh, uh, so, Modi, linawin lang natin, no? kasi December, ano ba ngayon? December 12 na ngayon. Uh, malapit na magpasko at napakadaming holiday. December 31 ang deadline. So basically, mababawasan tayo ng isang linggo, and that's just a few weeks away. Uh, kung magpe-petition kayo sa Supreme Court at kailangan nyo pang pag-aralan, anong magyayari in the meantime? Uh, kung kailangan nyo pang pag-aralan, tapos lumagpas ng December 31, di po ba magkaka-overlap yun? Ano pong magyayari sa transport sector natin in the meantime? Ang isang, uh, ang isang inano nga po natin ay dapat ay uh, tanggalin muna ng LTFRB yung uh, deadline ng December 31. At uh, tayo ay uh, ang isang pinag-aaralan po natin dito ay opening of salvo ng uh, ng January ng 2024 ay uh, ipapail po natin yung uh, sa Court Supreme. Uh, lastly, Mr. Floranda, itong strike that you've organized for December 14 and 15, how big are you expecting this to be? Gano po kalaki ang uh, itong strike? Ang uh, tansya po natin ay ako uh, sa bahagi po ng members ng Piston, eh, nasa 100,000, at uh, mayroon pang uh, mga local association uh, labas sa mem uh, member ng Piston, na uh, membro ng iba't ibang mga federation, ay uh, nagpapaabot sa atin na sila ilalahok at makikisa dito sa magaganap na December 14 na 15. Dahil nga ang nakataya nga rito ay yung kanilang kabuhayan at yung kanilang karapatan bilang serbisyo bilang mamamayan. So you're expecting na lahat ng member ng Piston ay uh, lalahok? Opo, uh, nagpaabot na sa atin din yung ating mga region. Katulad po ng uh, Iloilo, ng Panay, at uh, ng Bacolod City, at uh, Cebu City, at uh, sa bahagi po ng Region 4A at uh, Region 3, hanggang sa Region na uh, region 11 at uh, Region 1. Okay. Uh, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, we'll check back in with you later on. Thank you for joining us. Piston National President Modi Floranda. Quezon City has raised a red alert status for COVID-19 after a rise in cases. Data from the city's epidemiology unit showed that COVID-19 cases in QC more than doubled earlier this month from weeks before. The positivity rate in the city is also at 14%, way above the 5% threshold set by the World Health Organization. The city government says it won't be mandating face masks, but they are advising the public to follow minimum health standards. Mas dapat, mas maganda na sa uh, open area, no? yung wala, wala dun sa enclosed na area. May dapat ma proper yung ventilation, no? nakabukas yung mga pinto, pintana, na so tapos uh, yung mga mga yun nga, yung mga pupunta sa may party na to dapat ano wala silang mga symptoms no so magsabahi ka na lang muna huwag ka na makipag-party pag ikaw ay may mga symptoms There's also a slight uptick in cases nationwide which is being attributed to increased social gatherings and increased mobility this holiday season The last search natin na talagang search was yun nga, um, around May Okay. This year, at din nga mga social gatherings, mga events, kaya mga parties, the malls, malamit tao. So hindi naman to alarming, kasi hindi medyo nag slow down na increase ng positivity rate. So hindi naman siya alarming, pero at the same time, din nga pwede pa siyang tomas ng bahagya, and we're gonna see more, maybe more cases. Right, we're gonna take a quick trip down memory lane before we go. Reg, I don't know if you are familiar, but when I was a kid, I loved going here. It's called Fiesta Carnival in Araneta in Cubao. <laughs> oh, Do you yes. remember it? Um, it's yeah, a little it's years ago. Yeah. But, oh, yes. 
Well, it did used to be one of the busiest and oh, happiest attractions. Oh, it's really black and white by photo. Oh, my. It's so sad. But this was one of the happiest attractions in Metro Manila with a lot of exciting rides and games enjoyed by both children and those young at heart. It was also a historic symbol for fun and entertainment until the 1990s, even called Mini Disneyland. So why are we showing this photo? Well, apparently, ta-da, it's back. That's right, Fiesta Carnival 2.0. Araneta City has given us a first look at Fiesta Carnival, which is currently on a dry run ahead of its official relaunch this December. From jump playground to a roller skating rink, a carousel, as well as different rides for kids and adults to enjoy. Mukhang magiging masaya ang Christmas sa Fiesta Carnival, which will be holding its grand opening on December 15. Oh, 2.0 talaga, look at that. I Bumper know! Cars. Walang ganyan dati. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel deprived now? <laughs> I feel, no actually. That I was gonna like say. basic games like toss the ring. Toss the and... ring, yung mga ducks na nagpo-float, <laughs> di ba? And that yung may meron din siyang umiikot, but it wasn't really a carousel. It was these Those are different the animals. Joys. We had such uh... Actually, I like the popcorn and the cropek. I don't was... even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the food. But so I'm maybe... glad they brought it back. Right? Yeah. December 15, yung date pa talaga yeah. ng transport strike. Oh, yes. And my optic ng COVID, so if you're gonna go, wear a mask. <laughs> That's way, one way to tie up all our stories tonight. <laughs> we are one news, all sides, all the time. That's it for the show tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.